The Castropolis Podcast Network and the BJ Murphy Show present the Redirecting Our Dollars campaign. Did you know that Black Americans collectively have about $1 trillion in spending power? And since 2001, Black spending power has increased by 108%. Castropolis Podcast Network and the BJ Murphy Show, we are dedicated to help aspiring entrepreneurs launch and grow their businesses. We provide advertising, marketing, media support, coaching, and resources. Castropolis and the BJ Murphy Show want to build and support our own in our own cities. The Castropolis Podcast Network and the BJ Murphy Show say let's build and support our own in the cities where we live. Entrepreneurs, small business owners, nonprofit organizations, find out how you can benefit from the Redirecting Our Dollars campaign in your city. Contact us via email, info at castropolis.net. That's info at castropolis.net. The next time you drive through Central Georgia, we've got a radio station we think you'll love. We're Magic 100, playing all of the songs you grew up with. You'll find us at 100.1 FM. That's 100.1. On I-75, you can tune us in from the north at Locust Grove and from the south when you get to Perry. 100.1 FM. Classic soul hits. Magic 100. This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 169 of This is the G Podcast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and unfortunately, I I hate to say it because we go through this every year. I've been doing this podcast, uh, this podcast for four years. And it's unfortunate because we live in the South. We live in the Southeast that um, you know what we get this time of the year. We're in the season. Uh, yeah. and, and we do have to send our prayers and love to all our G's in Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia. Uh, it was just a mess overnight. Uh, you know, a few days ago, you know, it was bad. Uh, we tape on Sunday. And, and as we tape on Sunday, Georgia, Troop County, LaGrange uh, got hit with, uh, I think they're, they're looking at this as an E4. Uh, possibly. Wow. I don't think it's an E5, but um, the, the actual... Uh, storm in uh, Mississippi, and I'm looking at the numbers here, was an E4, E5. And, you know, we're we're talking a couple of weeks ago about L.A. getting, you know, a tornado, which is very unusual. But but the thing about this, when you think about it, uh, back in the day, because I'm old enough to remember that Kansas, it was Oklahoma, it was Texas, we would get storms, but it seems like, and it has, the uh, tornado alley has shifted. And, you know, it, you just have to feel for a lot of the folks. Mississippi, this city was probably the poorest area, uh, one of the poorest areas in Mississippi. A lot of these homes, for the, you know, for the most part, aren't well built. So, no. um, you know, an E4, E5, devastating. So our prayers, our love. Uh, yeah. well, you know, goes out to uh, to those folks. Uh, President Biden, I know, is doing his job and approving the emergency declarations. And, uh, you know, we'll put our prayers in for these families in the cities for a quick recovery. OK. Uh, and also, if you had March Madness brackets, it's not much better. It is just <laughs> I'm sorry for the basketball fans. I mean, who knew? <laughs> I mean, who knew? I won't go too deeply into it. But who knew? I just have to oh, say, yeah. that. I mean, you know, Alabama, Houston out, all the blue, you know, the blue blood's gone. It's just yeah, a mess. Yeah. You know, right it, it's the year yeah. of the underdog. I it think is. all the people, like all these top seeds, you know, they got sent home very early. Very on. early. And my, our guest well, is, it's, our it's, guest it's is here portion. looking at us like, is, is this a freaking sports part? <laughs> no, so, and I'm, trust me, I am sports illiterate, but I'm just saying it's time for a shift because, I mean, I don't mm. know about you know, anybody else, but you get tired of seeing the same people play year after year. After but you year. know what, Tanya B, it hasn't really kicked in yet, but these NIL deals, there's more parity, I think. And that's not the complete reason, but I think you're just seeing more yeah. people attracted to these schools that don't typically win. So we'll get into it. We'll have somebody on the show in a couple of months. And we'll talk uh, I about think, I think it's pretty yeah. cool. And, you know, yeah. big ups to Don Staley and, and the, you know, women's basketball is really kind of really uh Making a statement this year, I believe. Staley needs to coach in the NBA. I'm, I'm just, I, I'd take her for the you Hawks. Know, I know that she does. She, yeah. she coached, she coached the Olympics. She 
She should coach yeah, the Hawks. <laughs> ain't nobody, I know. You know, and the Falcons too, for that matter. Oh, no, God. they're not ready for that jelly. You know, she's not ready for it because she does not. She does. As Big Frida said in Beyonce's Lemonade, I did not come here to play with you hoes. Yeah. And Dawn is about her business. And she, yeah, she is, is a proven winner. Yes, yeah, she is. Absolutely. Also, I want to thank, uh, again, uh, Judge Kelly S. Hill, Cobb County, Superior Court. Yeah. Uh, coming in for Women's uh, History Month. Thank you so much, Judge. And yeah. a big thanks to our super OG fan, super fan, uh, impromptu producer, uh, Gigi Price. Thank you so much uh, for sending uh, Judge Kelly my way. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I got to get to it. Uh, we're going to do news first, but I got to say uh, thank you so much, man. George Cheedy, thank you, man. Thank Happy you to be here. so much for coming in. And, and, and let me tell you, I follow George on Twitter. That's how I, I heard about him. And, um, you know, his, his, um, his tweets, his demeanor, <laughs> <laughs> his comedy is, is just, uh, I mean, it, it's essential to the times we live in. And, and he, it's a lot of what's going on, uh, directly on the head. His, his uh, knowledge of Atlanta is stellar. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch him. And, and, and one, one thing, tell us now, uh, George, what's the, how do people subscribe to what you do? The, the link, how do they get? So that? for folks who, who want to follow what I'm doing, you go to the Atlanta objective and that's, uh, Atlanta objective dot Uh, and that's where I'm, uh, that's where like the big long think pieces show up as I'm looking at what's going on around, around the city. Mm -hmm. And and it is it is definitely in depth. Um, you know, he's worked in politics, uh, city council member before. Uh, he was a U.S. Army reporter, covered uh, the Pacific. Um, you know, again, the dry sense of well, I won't call you dry sense of humor because I have the dry sense of humor. I won't. I won't yes, I have a sterling wit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm told. He does have a sterling wit. Uh, he's a contributor to countless news agencies and publications uh, recently. I posted one of his Rolling Stones article, Rolling Stone articles, um, and you know one of my uh, favorites. He worked for the you worked for the Creative Loafing back in the day. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I contributed here and there. Contributor, and he's a UMass grad, uh, Amherst. Ah! So you know, so definitely give him his props. The MBA from Tech. Have you figured it out yet? Have you no. Figured? Still haven't. No, I don't know what the hell I was doing. Like, I'm much smarter now than I was. Like, that much is clear. Like, I'm like, and if I knew, if I knew 10, 20 years ago what I had learned at tech, there would be a lot more people in jail. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And Georgia okay. Tech, man. Has Georgia Tech improved, you, you think, with all the moves they, they're making? Because uh, I think they're getting better. Um, I, I, I mean, plainly, I think they're, they are a growing, uh, they're a growing institution. Um, they are not stagnant. Um, my only concern is that they're in Georgia, and Georgia has got some weird stuff coming up, mm -hmm. like that's going to make Georgia Tech less attractive to people. Do you think when you were at Tech, did you ever think that Georgia would get this much? Mo the University of Georgia would get this momentum, this much momentum ahead of Tech. I didn't because I'm like. I have a Georgia Tech student's disdain for the University of Georgia just in general. So because you no, are, I did not. <laughs> but it's a really competitive university. Yeah. Like you've got to be, you have to have your stuff together yeah. to to go to the University of Georgia. You cannot be a slouch. Um, My money went there, so yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a more selective co college than my undergraduate school was. I, you know, it's like you, you know, they're they're important. Yeah, so true, so true. Hey, hey, uh, Tanya B., George, hang on for a minute. I want to go ahead and do news with Syracuse Mike. Uh, a lot of headlines this week. And, and then, you know, I want to get into uh, what I asked George to come on the show about, what I, I asked him to come on today. So we'll get into the news and we'll come right back. Here we go. News team, assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. UBS has agreed to buy Credit Suisse. UBS is Switzerland's largest bank. The emergency rescue deal of their biggest rival is designed to tamp down the financial market panic that resulted after the recent failure of two American banks. Colm Kellner is the chairman of UBS. UBS intends to downsize Credit Suisse's investment banking business and align it with our conservative risk culture. 
New York City is on alert and security has been beefed up before the possible announcement of an indictment against former President Donald Trump. New York Mayor Eric Adams. We're doing what we always do. We're monitoring comments on social media and the NYPD is doing their normal role of making sure that there's no inappropriate actions in the city. And we're confident we're going to be able to do that. The website Politico says an indictment is expected Wednesday. That's according to three people involved in the deliberation. A grand jury in New York is investigating whether Trump falsified business documents in 2016 in order to make hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Trump has urged his supporters to protest. In another legal matter closer to home, lawyers for the former president filed a motion to quash the final report of the special Fulton County grand jury. That grand jury investigated whether Trump and others interfered in the 2020 Georgia election. Trump's lawyers also want D.A. Fonnie Willis disqualified from pursuing a case against the former president. He said he would be arrested Tuesday, but he wasn't. In fact, he still hasn't been indicted. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office has put numerous witnesses in front of the grand jury there and even offered former President Donald Trump a chance to go before the grand jury. That is the biggest indication that the DA will eventually indict him. If he is indicted, Trump will likely be the first person to make the news public. In the meantime, demonstrators who want to see Trump indicted far outnumbered MAGA supporters Tuesday outside the Manhattan Criminal Court, where he is expected to be charged. The surveillance video of the March 6th incident at Central State Hospital in Virginia has been released. It shows officers dragging Ivo Otiento, a mentally ill black man, into an admissions room where he was moved toward a table before being laid down and restrained on the ground. He was already handcuffed and shackled. Otiento's family saw the video last week. His mother spoke about it publicly. My son was treated like a dog, worse than a dog. My son was tortured. Otiano died in custody. Also last week, a Virginia prosecutor charged seven sheriff's deputies and three staff members at the hospital with second-degree murder. A grand jury indicted them Tuesday. TikTok's chief executive shows Shu was in Washington Thursday and forced to answer questions about his company's relationship with China, as well as what it does to protect young users. It was a tense hearing on the Hill as the company faces a bipartisan push to ban the app entirely in the U.S. over national security concerns. The House Energy Committee chairwoman is Kathy McMorris Rogers, who says TikTok is clearly a security risk. TikTok is a grave threat of foreign influence in American life. ByteDance, a Chinese company, owns TikTok, and their CEO says his company operates independently. Only vetted personnel operating in a new company called TikTok U.S. Data Security can control access to this data. Throughout the hearing, Xu stressed TikTok's distance from the Chinese government, something many U.S. lawmakers find hard to believe. The U.S. carried out airstrikes on an Iran-backed group in Syria after an American contractor was killed when a suspected Iranian-made drone attacked a facility housing U.S. personnel in the northeast part of the city. Five U.S. service members and one other U.S. contractor were wounded Thursday in the attack on the coalition base. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told the American Association of Bankers Tuesday that there is a possibility that more bank rescues may be needed. But not right now. The situation is stabilizing and the U.S. banking system remains sound. Yellen's comments were intended to make it clear that the U.S. is committed to protecting this country's banking system. Hey, before we get into first, uh, thank you so much, uh, Syracuse Mike. But before we get into uh, why I asked you to come in, George, I got to ask you this, man. Uh, When you hear all this and you know what's going on in Atlanta, all this together cumulatively, as a journalist, man, where are we? Where do you think we are as a country right now? Honestly, I think we're on the edge. Um, I think this is an inflection point. I think it can go broadly either way. And I don't necessarily think our destiny is completely in our own hands. Hmm. Take Deutsche Bank, for example, since we're talking about bank bailouts for a second. Mm-hmm. We will never bail out Deutsche Bank. Like the United States government is not going to bail out a, a German bank. Yeah. And right now, uh, there are people burning stuff down in France. Yeah. And so you have to ask yourself whether or not the rest of Europe is going to bail out Deutsche Bank either. Um, but if Deutsche Bank goes, a whole bunch of other things go all at once for everybody. Um, 
we don't control, not really, the, the war in, in Ukraine. Um, we have an inflation problem that is a product of worldwide economic dysfunction. Um, I'm holding my breath. Uh, and I think a lot of other people are too. Like we're in a really uncertain time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The other thing, uh, and this is more Atlanta based, who do you think does best news in Atlanta right now? Who's really, I mean, who's really serving the people best? So it's funny. Like the problem here is that everybody is serving the public much more poorly than they used to. <laughs> like, and that's the, I mean, just straight up. Like when I joined the Atlanta Journal Constitution in 2005, there were 200 journalists working at that, at that publication. And I think they're under 60 now. Wow. Yeah. Cut um, times. Yeah. And it's the same, I'm, I've got to say, for all of the television show, television news. Channel 2 is the big dog. The Channel 2 is connected to the AJC. And uh, it's Channel 2 and then everybody else. And I have a show on Channel 5, so bear with me here. <laughs> um, yeah. They... Like, I think the core news mission is being served by all four major, major broadcasters in in Atlanta. And I honestly think the Channel 5's news news department stands up to Channel 2's on any given day. Mm -hmm. I think they do just as good or better. It depends on what you're looking at. Yeah. There are a few standout journalists at every single one of these publications and television uh, television networks. Um for the stuff that I've been working on, like the Young Thug case, uh, Michael Seiden at Channel Two is a leader. Like he'll he'll kick everybody else's butt. He has kicked my butt mm -hmm. from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, where you really want to look is at the local local level. Like get away from television, get away from uh, the AJC, um, and look at who's writing at and sort of the the hyper local level, like Decaturish does excellent work. Axios, even though it's owned by uh, Cox right now, is also doing excellent, excellent work. Um, both NPR stations are doing excellent work. Like they're, the local NPR folks can stand up both to the AJC and any of the television broadcasters. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And, and you know, I asked you to come on, man, because you said... Uh, on one of your interviews, you told uh, someone, an interviewer, uh, asking you questions. Um, they called you a journalist, an investigative journalist. And you stepped in and you said, no, I'm just a journalist. Right. And, and, and he said, well, what do you mean by that? And you said, if, if you're a journalist and you're not investigating, then you're not really being a journalist. And, and, I, I, and I, I heard that. And, 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 and honestly, it's amazing because so many journalists are doing it for the likes and and for the follows and, you know, for the fame and glory. And, and, and you know, I admire people like you because this is why you get into journalism is to find out what's really going on and report to the people. So kudos to you, man. Uh, I appreciate on, you. On a lot of the stuff you write, um, you know, and, and those are the kind of journalists we need because these are the kind of times that are really uncertain. And we don't we don't need the we don't need the bullshit right now. We don't. Um, One of the things I'm looking for out there is like my problem with my journalism, my internal critique is that it doesn't scale hmm. that like, if, like if I am some lone wolf journalist and I can't create more me's out there, then I'm not sure I'm actually doing it right. Yeah. Um, there are other people who are pursuing stories, story by story, that are starting to get at this in a way where they could be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm doing okay right now. Like, I've got a roof over my head and money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And that's new. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm as shocked as anyone. But there it is. Like, I've been, managed to carve a niche out for myself. But it shouldn't be a niche carving thing. It yeah. should be, there should be, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, somebody else needs to be able to step in and do stuff. Yeah. And I think there are people out there who are starting to get at that in a way, because I think the market has finally started to shift. And there are people who are, if they are good and they are diligent, will will find the audience will find them. Yeah. Okay, man. We we're like a one hour show, so I'm going to ask yeah. you. I've seen your writings. Uh, everybody knows or has access to the 80 page indictment and all the mm -hmm. information contained in it on YSL. 
Okay. Um, can you give us a synopsis of where we are currently with this case in Fulton County? Just a synopsis. So uh, let me, 10,000 foot view, mm -hmm. a street gang called YSL that was operating primarily in South, Southeast Atlanta, an, an accused street gang has been rolled up and 24 of its members are charged with gang and racketeering crimes, including some murders. And two of those people are the rappers Young Thug and Gunna, who are very, very high profile rappers. Um, they were arrested last year in like April, May, June. Uh, and they're probably not going to see the start of this trial until June. Wow. Um, because jury selection is okay. intense because this trial is going to take six to nine months to, to, to conclude. And so you have to find a jurors. You have to find jurors who are willing to sit for <laughs> six to nine months and set aside the rest of their lives. So they're going through hundreds of people to try to find 12 jurors and two alternates who can sit for this whole thing. Hey, is it, they true? Started, is it true that they had not found a juror at the beginning of February? No. They? Yeah, they had not found a juror and they haven't found one. They're unlikely to have a, a seat, a single juror before the end of March. Like, I don't think this gets started before May. Yeah. Um, they have still they're still trying to qualify people on the basis of who has an exemption or an excuse that would get them out of a nine month jury. So if you've got young kids, you don't get to sit. If you have a job where you can't walk away for six to nine months, you you can't sit. Yeah. Uh, if you are too young or too old, you can't sit. Um, if you're a full time college student, you can't sit. Um, and so you're going to end up with folks who are either unemployed. Um, who don't have children or are retired. Yeah. Ultimately, that's who's going to be on the jury. Um, and I don't know if you really could call that reflex, reflective of the community, um, but that's who you're going to get. That's how this is going to go. And in the meanwhile, all of this other crazy stuff just keeps popping up in the background as this marches along. Well, you know, we, we were having a conversation uh, before, you know, when we first met, about the fact that we don't want to sound like our parents when it comes down yeah. to how we view the music, the artistry. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, basically on Prince in high school. Yeah. So Prince, you know, of course, if you if you know, you know, Prince basically led to, you know, uh, albums being stickered, you know, uh, by uh, Gore, by Tipper Gore. Uh, yep. And two live crew, two live crew, two live crew thing is thirty years old 30, now. Thirty I can't years believe old. It. It's amazing. So you know, with with, uh, with that being said, you're mentioning that in order for them to get jurors, most of these jurors are going to be old, much older. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the music industry is possibly in peril, considering the outcome, what the outcome might be of this case? Possibly, they're already in peril. <laughs> Yeah, they're already in peril, but it's more than that. It's a question of how you define peril. Yeah. Let us fix the peril. Um, the like my sort of broad concern about the music industry is that it is catering to an audience that seems to want uh, vicarious exposure to criminality. Um, and I know what that sounds like. I know I'm being judgmental and I don't want to be like Tipper Gore, but I think there's a qualitative difference between two live crew, yeah. like naughty lyrics about sex and drugs and whatnot. And, uh, you know, when you're actually looking at dead bodies in the street, quite literally dead bodies in the street that are connected to groups of people, um, like my concern is that this the industry has been banking on this sort of voyeuristic look at what it views to be authentic street life in Atlanta. Yeah. And one, it's not like street life in, in Atlanta is, is not what you're listening to in these songs. That's a lie. Like I would just start with that. But what I want to see is the music industry itself start to police its own activities around who they're signing and what they're promoting. Because um, it's not the sort of thing that can be 
you can't tip or gore your way out of that problem. No, you can't legislate your way out of it. I'm on, I'll say this right straight up. I don't think you can prosecute your way out of it. Yeah. Um, it has to be a choice that the industry makes because it's in their financial interest. Yeah. But I think this case creates that financial interest. Okay. And, and we talked about Times versus Sullivan, which every journalism student has to eventually study. Um, do you think the YSL case and, and even the Fox News case will have impact on, on a lot of industries, including our industry, including podcasting, uh, yeah. including, uh, you know, people who blog, um, all that? Do you think uh, this YSL case could also be something that could impact what we do? I, I don't think Tom V. Sullivan is threatened by the YSL case. OK, um, I think the Fox News thing and in particular, the noises that uh, Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, is making yeah. are a much a much more serious threat to Tom Sullivan. Tom Sullivan essentially says that a news organization cannot be successfully sued for slander uh, or libel, I should say, unless someone, someone can prove actual malice. That it's not just that you got it wrong. But you got it wrong because you hated the guy and you wanted to hurt him. Yeah. And that's a high bar. Yeah. Like there's there's got to be room for mistakes to be made in order for other words, journalists aren't are gonna avoid covering things that they think are gonna draw a lawsuit. Nobody and wants to take a chance. You're right. Nobody wants right. to yeah, you know, cutting edge. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason why small like small news organizations have been dying the way they had over the years and why like we've got this sort of blandness in because even now, even with Tom Sullivan in effect, news departments shy away from writing about things where whoever they're writing about can push back. They just they we don't read enough about corporate malfeasance because they're afraid somebody's gonna come after them with money. Yeah. Um, if Tom Sullivan dies, like we're looking at happy fun news about children, at, you know, children's sports and uh, old folks homes and, you know, the 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 picnic and what <laughs> instead of this guy should go to jail. And this is why yeah. like that will go away. Like that's what's at risk with Tom Sullivan. I don't think the YSL case threatens that um but i do think that the fox news case might because uh rupert murdoch's got enough money to throw lawyers through a supreme court that does not have the interests of the public in this regard at heart yeah, yeah. i don't think the supreme court likes journalists very much yeah agree agree Man, by the way great article uh you did on cop city uh thanks for sending that over to me and and I'm going to ask you about Cop City in Atlanta. Well, it's not Cop City, but that's the name. You know, it's been given. I'm going to call. We're going to call it whatever. You know why Cop City? We call them the Atlanta Police Training Facility Center. I don't remember it is. that Cop City. It's because it's short. Yeah. It's because it's seven <laughs> letters in a space. Yeah. Because headline space is dear, and and that will fit in a tweet. Yeah. And that's why. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. But, you know, you like, you know, and, and, and from from what I get in your writings, you have respect for the leaders of the city currently. And, oh. and, and you think they're capable. But this situation is murky for a lot of people. And, and I agree. even when you look at the surveys, the surveys really are, 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 are split among racial lines. You've got, you know, the bit. white community in, in favor and the majority of the black community who aren't in favor. So it's it's closer though. Like it's not like it's every white person thinks this is a good idea and every black person. It's actually much closer than that. Like there's like a 10 point difference. Yeah, it's not how black people feel about the Democratic Party versus yeah. white people in the Republican Party. Right. No, it's not like that at all. It's more like a 60-40 split opposed in the black community and like a 55, 45 approval rate in the white community, maybe. And I might be exaggerating that a bit, but it's no, clear, it it's close. <laughs> um, and it's close because people have really legitimate concerns about crime in Atlanta. Yeah. 
They also have really legitimate concerns about how police should be trained and where the money should be spent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mean, reasonable people can sit on either either side of this argument. Um, And my problem is unreasonable people on both sides of this argument are the ones who are being heard. Yeah, I agree. Do you think um, it's well, based on what the mayor is saying, he's in full support. Uh, I know there's some things that are coming. I think he up. has to be at yeah, this point. Yeah, I agree. Like I, I, he's he is. There's an and it's what I wrote. Like he's in a no win situation right now. Yeah, I agree. If he turned did a 180 tomorrow and said, "Yeah, you know this cop city thing, that's a bad idea. I'm going to cancel it." Mm-hmm. Like he, like th- everybody who's been a victim of a violent crime in Atlanta and their supporters would get together and they would beat him with brooms until he left the, the building. Yeah. Uh, but if he continues on the way he's going on, like there is a really legitimate youth movement that is starting to emerge in Atlanta yeah. that views cop city as uh, like their symbol of, you know, this is why everything is screwed up. It's because this is a priority instead of housing and homelessness and police brutality issues and basic equity in a city that has the largest degree of racial inequality in the United States. Like you're not like, it's a bad time to be the mayor when those two forces are pulling apart, pulling at you. Like there isn't, he doesn't have a good middle ground to, to, to stand on. Um, There's if real political talent under these circumstances would find a a compromise. It would be it would be looking for a compromise and then tell all of the people who don't want to compromise. You're the problem like that would be the way out. Yeah. But I don't know whether or not anybody, the mayor or anyone else, has enough political talent to get there. Yeah, I agree. So so with that being said, man, you know, it's a big issue. And, and you mentioned, you know, the fact that you've got um unreasonable people on both sides. And you look at what's going on 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 the college campuses, the AU Center, they're adamantly opposed to this and very vocal about it. Um, Do you think, man, you know, by looking at everything we just talked about, do you think Atlanta's in a good place as a city? I mean, you I still think Atlanta's in a relatively good place. You've been here how long? How long have you been? You've been here. Uh, I moved here in 2005. In 2005. Yeah. 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 So I've been here 18 years. I've lived here longer than anywhere else in my life. Mm. And yeah, I think in a fundamental way, Atlanta is still as strong today as it was two or five or 10 years ago. There are problems in Atlanta that are very serious. Like Atlanta has a, the worst inequality problem in the United States. Yeah. It is starting to look at a housing problem that is going to remind people of San Francisco or New York if it keeps going in the direction that it's going. Our politics are kind of cracked. Um, and because we're going to be the center of the political universe until we stop being a purple state, we're going to get all of this stuff coming from outside forever that are going to amplify all of the internal things that we've got. Like, those are problems. But the fundamentals of Atlanta, like, it is a diversified economy that is friendly to well-educated black people and note the qualification there Mm -hmm. uh, that it is a strong economy that is resilient regardless of whatever else is going on. It's still less expensive than New York and Los Angeles. Yes. Um, And there are a few bright spots here where people really can make it if they're talented in ways that they can't like all of that's still true. Like Atlanta is still a great place. But it's not a great place for everybody. Like, I I feel like Jimmy Breslin talking about New York 30 years ago. Like, I both love and hate Atlanta equally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because and, you know, you're right. I mean, the wealth gap is 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 huge here. You have had, you the haves and have nots. Tanya B., go ahead. Wealth disparity, we're topping wealth um uh, health and like I said it, all this inequality and it seems like the people that are getting hurt the most are the people that were the born and bred people here for us you know for some if you come from a like say like you said from New York or you come from California or you know or somewhere like that and you see what the rent is here on a one bedroom apartment it's cheap for you but the mm-hmm. person who's lived in Atlanta all of their life can't afford to live in Atlanta anymore and I still I stick and I stand by this uh, uh, Mayor Dickens and everybody else on city council, everybody who got voted in this last go around 
when re-election time comes up, those same people that voted them in will not be here to re-elect them because they will have to leave the city because they can't afford to live here anymore. So true. So true. Absolutely true. Yeah. The, here's, a, here's a statistic that uh, people cite often. Uh, somebody born in the bottom 20% of incomes in Atlanta only has a 4% chance of getting into the top 20% of incomes wow. through the course of their life. It is the lowest income mobility in America, of any major city in the, in America, people who are moving here are economically mobile, and they've as often as not they're well educated or well trained, and they're looking for like the job that pushes them up. Mm -hmm. um, and for them, Atlanta is an excellent place to move for all of the obvious reasons. But this YSL trial that I'm covering, like one of the things that I keep coming back to is all those kids. All of the folks who were in this accused gang, like they all grew up in poverty in one of the most impoverished parts of this city mm -hmm. that remains impoverished. And that's Cleveland Avenue. Cleveland Avenue. Yeah. Yep. Like the trial does not change the conditions of Cleveland Avenue. Mm -hmm. Like it does not. This anti-gang push isn't being paired with like a, you know, a neighborhood reconstruction project that keeps people out of gangs who are on Cleveland Avenue, that raises property values, that gets people jobs, that keeps them in school, and that lowers the risk of young people joining a gang in the first place. It's just, all right, we're arresting and charging these guys. And sure, if they are guilty of the crimes that they're accused of, they should be arrested. They should be charged. They should be convicted. They should go to jail. And they should stay there long enough for other people to be safe. But it doesn't change Cleveland Avenue. And so five years from now, some other set of 25 people are going to be looking at a RICO case because the same conditions that created, you know, a criminal street gang here will have created another one. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem for me. Yeah. One last question. If you have one, Tanya B. And, and, uh, and George, let people know how to get in contact with you. Question, you got a question, Tanya B.? No, I, just, I, I agree with what you're saying. Is and say, until you know they have pushed everybody out of every other section of Atlanta, until they're ready to come and gentrify Cleveland Avenue, it's not going to change. But then when you push people out, the question then becomes, like, so they can't afford to stay here. Like, they can't afford to leave. They can't afford to stay. So where do they go? Yeah. They just retaliate and they take it to the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. Any, any uh, last minute, last thoughts? George, and oh, you know, let, let, let people know how to get in contact with you. Just to tell you, you had something else? Yeah. No, just about this whole YSL thing. My thing, you know, how they're, they're doing this whole thing. And, you know, some of these people I have worked with in the course of my career, and this whole thing is, you know, don't let the art destroy these people and blah, 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 blah. And I, I know, and I'm like, and that's like six over here, half dozen the other. The reason why I say that is this. A lot of these hip hop artists do not live what they write about, nor do they write it. They may have an idea and then they take it and then they have all these ghostwriters have been ghostwriting hip hop lyrics since the beginning of, of hip hop. That's one thing. But then I believe there are some that do actually write about their experience and how they articulate it. And, you know, like you have people like, let's just say R. Kelly, you know, was illiterate, but, you know, was able to still produce music. So I guess, you know, this whole thing about, you know, you know, lyrics shouldn't be used in cases against hip hop artists. I'm like, y'all need to find something else, you know, yeah. because yeah. You know, I just think it's a, it's a double edged sword because a lot, not only do they not write these lyrics, most of them can't write, period. So, yeah. you know, and, and they yeah. turn, and they turn really, and they turn to the streets. And this is what, they, and so it's almost like the, the recidivism rate of these people that come and go like a revolving door. They come out, they go in, they come out, they go in. Yeah. You know, they, they, you know, it's almost by design, but at the end of the day, you know, they are the most downtrodden. The people that make the money, those people are sitting in those up behind those robes with or without hoods in these courtrooms making decisions because it benefits them. You know, And nobody. I, and, and I think, George, you hit you said it best, uh, you know, in terms of the labels being responsible, ultimately. They you don't know, care. They just care about well, money. You know, right now, but some responsibility yeah. uh, has to be. Jadakus came out with an article this week. You know, and, and at one point he didn't agree with it, but he says now, you know, he agrees that, you know, the labels have to be responsible for who they sign. Um, you right. know, the, the other the other thing, you know, and, and I'll say this, and you know, I'll be brief. You know, our generation, grew, I grew up on, again, I go back to Prince. I mean, 
the Dirty Mind album <laughs> in high school. You know, all you have to do is listen to that album and how edgy and how crazy it was and how over the line controversy, so on and so forth, all those albums. So no one's really, uh, you know, pushing, you know, censorship. I don't think this is a censorship issue. It's I don't people, think so either. People are dying right now. Right. Prince issue. wasn't killing people. <laughs> right. Prince's, music, Prince's music didn't kill people. So, you know? so, yeah, so my, it's my not one, censorship. Like, I don't my, think it's censorship. My, Go ahead. my parting thought here is this. Okay. Atlanta's got about 500,000 people in it. About half are black. About 80,000 of those black Atlantans are poor. Mm -hmm. In any given year, and this last year, you had perhaps 800 aggravated assaults, shootings, and 170 murders, almost exclusively of poor black people. But there are 80,000 poor black people who live in Atlanta. And this idea that the perception of what Atlanta is, is being defined by this subset of less than 1% of who Atlanta actually is, that the rest of the world's image of what we are is being shaped by a narrative, a street narrative that doesn't reflect the lived reality of most people, never mind most black people, never mind most poor black people is a problem for me. It is the, yeah. it's, it, it is the means by which racism festers. Like the, the rest of the world will say, well, yeah, look at how they shoot each other. These black people do this. And it be turned like it is it is how it is a, like fundamentally bigoted idea that is propagated by the music industry because they have an audience for it. There is an audience in the world that wants to see black people talking about drugs and murder and, you know, misogyny uh, and as much as to say that this is what, well, this must be real. This is authentic, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm here to push back against that and say, absolutely not. This is not how most people live here. This isn't even how most people who are on the edge live here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that statement needs to be heard as loud as this music and it never will be. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it's one of the things that I'm looking at in context of this trial is the degree to which the narrative around Atlanta is, changes. Like, does this trial cause people to reevaluate what authenticity actually looks like? Good stuff. Give it up for George Cheedy, y'all. Uh, definitely a journalist. And here in Atlanta, uh, how can people, again, subscribe? To your Find me at the Atlanta Objective. That's the Atlanta Objective dot substack dot com. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the time on a Sunday, on a stormy, rainy yeah. Sunday at that. So, so thank you it's so much. I appreciate you, you, man. Thank you, and uh, hopefully we can get you back in here closer to um, closer to trial when, whenever yeah. that's going to be. Who knows? But sometime, sometime in September. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate man. both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Right, let's go ahead and take thank a break. You. And um, and we'll go um, come back with uh, Tanya B and the T again. Thank you, George. Thank you. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is B.J. Murphy. And I want to talk to you about the B.J. Murphy show redirecting our dollars campaign. Now, did you know that black Americans have about one trillion dollars in spending power? And since 2001, black spending power has increased by one hundred and eight percent. The B.J. Murphy Show, we are dedicated to helping aspiring African-American entrepreneurs launch and grow their businesses and provide advertising, media support, coaching and resources. At the B.J. Murphy Show, we're going to continue to be one of the most influential voices in black America, boldly espousing economic opportunities for entrepreneurs, small business owners and nonprofit organizations. So to find out how you can become a part of the movement, the redirecting our dollars campaign in your city reach out to me bj at bjmurphyshow.com that's bj at bjmurphyshow.com can't wait to hear from you now then children it's time for tea it's tea time y'all sip in the tea with tanya b oh lord tanya b the jonathan okay. major fans are holding their collective breath 
Okay, I just, first of all, I just want to say shout out to B.J. Murphy. He is um, one of the members of the 2023 class of the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. So shout out to B.J. Murphy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I got to get him okay. on. He's coming on the show soon, too. Let, let me get my mic so it sounds nice. Um, well, uh, the first thing I want to tell you about... Um, that sound like B.J. It, Murphy. Go ahead. That, <laughs> is that, you know, Rihanna's about to drop that baby, at, you know, very shortly. But do you know that the cops were called back to her house again after a man tried to sneak into the property, onto her property, and, and ask her to marry him, and it was not ASAP Rocky? Now, this man... <sighs> And I think from the looks of him, he probably took the mega bus all the way from South Carolina to ask her to marry him before, you know, security squashed him. But the thing is, the cops were called. The man was escorted off the property in handcuffs, but he was released and not arrested. And I said, well, what, did, he can just come back again because there was no consequence for that. But uh, I find that very interesting because back in 2018, the same, similar thing happened. Thank goodness Rihanna was not at home. And this guy broke into her house and he was hiding in her home for 12 hours and was discovered by her assistant. Now he was arrested. So this other interloper didn't make it past the driveway, but I think Lerana, she her security got to get it together. Well, you know what? They need to call. You ever seen them? Well, you haven't seen it. I'm pretty sure the reading with Monique, they need to call. Not yet. They need to call Monique. <laughs> That, that character. They need to call the did, fruit. They need to call. No, no I'm just right, saying. Right, the, right, right. Yeah. Anybody out there who's seeing the reading, that security. <laughs> yeah. The security hey, on that house. That's what she needs. Yeah. Uh, ahead, uh, call, it, call, call the fruit of Islam. Um, you know, that every too. week. I, okay, they don't play either. No nope. bean pie or not. But I um, you know, every week it's like I try to find something good. You know, you cheer for people and they just keep messing up. And this is Neo's third week as the dumb donkey of the week. And here is why. Now he's being sued in charge in the crypto scam and you know all coins aren't good coins but this one is serious because the securities and exchange commission is involved and they were the ones that filed charges against him soldier boy akon even lindsey lohan got caught up in this one hmm. and, and and what they did they they got down with this entrepreneur named justin sun and he's actually under fire because he illegally was vending assets manipulating the market and recruiting celebrities to use their names and their platforms to endorse and approve you know this his situation which was a scam and um you know they got paid for it. They got and when they when they say you got paid an undisclosed sum, you got a you got a bag. And um, what's interesting about this is that all the parties so far have put money into a pot except Soldier Boy because he don't have no money. Uh, he needed that check from Justin Sun, and right now uh, they've offered four hundred thousand dollars as a settlement. But this is like part of the same situation with that other company FXC or FTX, yeah. where they're suing Shaq and uh, Steph Curry and some other. So I was like, y'all, you know, and I say, well, should they be responsible? Do your due diligence because if you keep investing in scams, people are gonna give you the side eye, and Neo already got the side eye. So and from I what I heard, Tanya B, they also have to make sure that they disclose to the public that they're that they're getting paid. paid. They're paid yes. endorsements and not yeah. you know actual actual users in many cases, but just a paid endorsement. They need to let them Most out. of them don't use it. And if they did, you see, well, yeah. uh, anyway. Okay, yeah. now let's talk about some more <laughs> scandal. Um, the Isley brothers. Now, Ron Isley been sued and put in jail, and he still has not learned. And now he's being sued by his brother, Rudolph. And Rudolph left the group back in the 80s. He became a minister. And um, Ron Isley just has a really, I call it a sketchy, shady St. Louis past. Remember, you know, he lost a lot of female fans when he put the paws on Angela Wimbush. That was just one thing. Then he he did go to jail. And then, you know, he had a brother, uh, O'Kelly. And O'Kelly um, died in the early 80s. And do you know, for years after O'Kelly passed away, Ron Isley was cashing his bro his deceased brother's royalty checks and keeping the money and not giving it to his wife and family. Um, and then, you know, the same thing with Ernie. Everybody knows his MO. You got to pay him in cash so that the authorities won't look at him and say, where'd the money come from? He had, and I'll say allegedly, but I know what I know. He was putting allegedly. the money <laughs> allegedly. Okay. He was, I allegedly know what I know. Allegedly putting money into Ernie Isley's 
bank account and sometime Ernie didn't know about it. So it's like, man, I just say, you know, karma is a, is 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 a big old dish served up on a very large platter. I mean, you've already been to jail and know they had that song out called The Plug. Ron Isley, you are not the plug. And he's just always getting funny with the money. They had an agreement. He was supposed to split the money amongst his brothers because Isley is the family name. I hope they get the this Isley settled. Brooks. There's too much. I mean, in terms of how people feel about the music, you know, the artistry. I just hope that they find a way, you know, right, so, I mean, so it doesn't go so public. Just go right, ahead. He damn near 85 years old. Yeah, I mean, just come go on. Out, go out the right you way. Know, settle. I know. just say he ain't the plug anyway. Yeah. And this is something I think a lot of people I know, yeah, happy, I'm happy. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if Donald Richie ever go back to the Commodores because as far as I'm concerned, he's gumming up. Hey, I was hoping. Mind. I was hoping. Clyde Orange is still alive. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he don't want Lionel. No, Lionel getting in the way. Um, <laughs> no, the, the, the Tonys are coming back and I don't mean the awards yes. I am talking about. I'm talking about the Wiggins family. Yes. You know, one of the few, but think about it, one of the last few family bands, I mean, actual band of the late 80s and 90s. It's Raphael, his half brother, Dwayne Wiggins, who lives in Atlanta right now, mm -hmm. and their cousin, Timothy Christian Raleigh. They have mended their fences. I guess they're going to do like a Bon Jovi or a Rolling Stones and go get that bag because they're all getting close to the age of Social Security. Yep. And um, I, we're ready. I mean, you talk about hits. I mean, and the thing about it was when they came out back in the day, when they have even like, you know, Sons of Soul and even when the greatest the hits revival. Came out. That the album? revival all those oh, what had happened was <laughs> when i was living in philly at the time mm -hmm. they took the tonys after you know especially when feels good went you know crossed over mm -hmm. they took the tonys and instead of putting them on a tour like how we would see like key sweat and bbd and you know heavy d and lavert right. they took and put them on an mtv tour which means only the pop audience got to oh, see them okay. and instead of them coming to philly they took them to hershey park pennsylvania which wow. is not you know like getting on the train and going downtown yeah. so a lot of people didn't get you know i didn't see the tonys until i took a trip out to uh, the bay area but while i was living on the east coast i'd never seen the original tonys in concert so i mean yeah, I let just me, let me tell you where i saw them in concert you see the tonys? They, they opened up for janet jackson's rhythm nation if you remember they opened up for janet yeah, on the rhythm right? nation tour and in every city, what they would do, they'd open up, they'd do a short opening and the after party, they do the after party. So the Tonys would do like a two hour show. So they came to Atlanta, uh, they did the venue. It may have been back in the day, man. We're talking probably the Omni was still up back in the day when wow. yeah, when uh, Janet did the uh, Rhythm Nation tour. But they mm -hmm. did the Roxy in, Buck in Buckhead back in the day. Wow. So the Tonys did after the concert about an hour and a half, two hours. And Janet was just hanging out in the crowd and her people, her girl, you know, her dancers, her girls back in the day. Mm -hmm. It was Tina just, I mean, it was probably one of the best outside of the Prince after parties that used to happen all Woo. the time. That was probably Jesus. the hardest. But I look at, I mean, the Tonys, and, and I'll be brief about this. The Tonys were like, for me, you had Earth, Wind & Fire growing up, you know, growing up in my era. But Earth, I mean, band. let me say this. Earth, Wind & Fire was my band. That was the band. Earth, Wind & Fire started to kind of wind down. Then it was the time for me. Yeah. The time was like that band that we were saying, damn, you know, when what time, not what time is it, when the self-titled album, The Time came out, everybody yeah. was like, damn. Then The Time broke up. And then the Tonys, you know, the Tonys existed. And then after right, the Tonys, in. the only thing you had, maybe Mint Condition and a couple of other, you know, smaller bands that were, but, but it was, man, Tonys were one of those bands, you know? And now yeah. you've got uh, Bruno Mars and the Hooligans that are kind yeah. of keeping that whole... I mean, they're bringing it know? back, but yeah. yeah, we had an era where we did not have bands. Yeah, I agree. When you think about it, we didn't. We lost. And I think that, yeah, the Tonys and Mint Condition were the last, I mean, bands where they actually played the instruments, not, you know, oh, yeah. get up there and do a track date. So I am so ready for this. And the thing that's really cool about it is... um. You know, shout out to Walt Reader Jr. and Gentleman George and the Black Promoters wow. Collective. Who are Walt yeah, Reader who are, Jr. <laughs> that yes. Name. And wait, and wait, and just, I remember, not, not the, I remember not senior. the father. No, 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 no. We ain't talking about him. No, no, no. Keep it going. We're gonna talk. He owe me money. Uh, no, we're talking about Junior no, and Gentleman awesome. George. Awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they, you know, so they said, "Look, y'all, let's 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 make some money, get out here and get this bag." And uh, I'm excited. And that's now. He's. I don't do concerts. I don't do large crowds. But for that, yes, I'm I will excited. be there. 
Give it up. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Okay. And let's get to the story everybody's been waiting for. You know, this just developed, you know, in the last less than 72 hours. This, do you have a, 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 a sound effect? Wah, 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 yeah, wah. Let, let, let me try this. Here we go. There you go. Yes. Okay. Like that. Jonathan Major. Jonathan Major. Hmm. You know, it's just like Tyra Banks would say on America's Next Top Model. We were really rooting for you. We really wanted to see you do well. And in case you had your head under a rock, he has been arrested in New York after an alleged domestic dispute with his British girlfriend. Basic, basic. Um, And he claims, of course, he is the victim and that he's completely innocent. And of course, he's lawyered up and the lawyers are saying that they've got evidence to present to the D.A., um, expecting all charges to be dropped immediately, but the damage has kind of been done. But it says that two of them were in a vehicle where they were having an argument. There are witnesses. Uh, two other people saw that. But the interesting thing about it is there's a written statement that was submitted by two different women, and now they are recanting. Wow. Well, you know what? Yeah. I, I say this, and, and again, he is innocent until proven guilty. Right. And and you go on and you go on Twitter right now and most social media. They, he, is, no, he they, is the scourge of the earth. They you know. are dragging him for filth, flying, filth, flying, filth. But I got something else to tell you. But, but, you but let me say, I, but I got to say, you know, when you look at, you know, we don't know him that well. We really don't. He's, he's, he's still pretty much uh, new on the scene. And, you know, when I look at that whole because now he's part of the uh, the Marvel universe. OK, but so, how much longer? But you look at the people who've come up through the Marvel universe who've not been the best of citizens. You look at Ezra Miller, you know, who's playing the Flash and his shenanigans for over two, two years. You look he at, uh, you know, who is now James Gunn, uh, who's now part of D.C., who, you know, was at one point accused of being, you know, a pedophile and some other things. I mean, I don't know if that was proven or not, but a lot of issues going on. And then you look at, you know, a lot of what Robert Downey Jr. went through, you know, in and his past life. And mm-hmm. yeah, and but I, I, I still say give him the opportunity to be proven guilty or innocent before you start chucking him under the bus. You know, which I see a lot of right now. I don't think that's fair. You know, he, he he's it's not like he's got a list of stuff. But but you know, they claim they've got video, Tanya B. They claim, I mean, the defense, his people claim they have de- they have definitive video. So we'll see. Go ahead. You're about to say something else. Go ahead. No, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a double edged. It's a double standard, of course. But here's the thing. What what I think might be damning to him. And this is, you know, it's always bad when you when you, you know, <laughs> yep, when your past comes back to haunt you. Yeah. And he's known for not for not for dating non women of color. But let me make sure I got to read this. I got to get this right. OK, you know, um, Alleged, I'll say allegedly a classmate who is not of color that attended Yale drama school with him yeah. is claiming that he is surprised that it took this long for the issue to be exposed because he'd been putting paws on chicks since they were in college. You got you got receipts. So if these receipts? women, if these women come forward with receipts is, you know, it's going to be harder for him to prove his innocence. And, you know, right now it's, you know, it's just like he's, he's got a high, high profile relatively quickly. This one, this, you know, this last, it was Creed 3 kind of really raised, no kind of, it did raise his profile exponentially. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just like Chris Brown, you know, you got enablers around you. If he's been doing this since college, who enabled him to get away with this? So, it, you know, it's all I can say is oh, the jury is still out. Yeah. But, you know, he needs to take a lesson from Will Smith, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, even Chris Brown. But the thing about it is we ain't, we'll we get to Nate Parker in a minute. Yeah. But the thing is, he could have had 99 kids and 55 baby mamas. But domestic abuse with somebody that looks like that basic British woman, I'll just call a thing a thing. When you alienate your core fan base, like that's what's happening with him right now. Mm. It takes a long time to get redemption. And if you don't believe me, ask Neo. And, and you know, for the, for the sake of just brevity right now, because, we, you know, we're short on time. Uh, mm-hmm. The Nate Parker situation, I was doing GP3 podcast and the release of uh, the uh, what was the, the movie he did with uh, Birth, of, Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation. Mm-hmm. And, and all of it. I mean, it all sounds like this. I mean, he had a college, you know, the, the, the rape case in college, which I don't think he was ever convicted of. 
You have people saying the same thing about his past. And, you know, it, it's it's just unfortunate. I hope again, I mean, let let the just let the wheels of justice roll. Let them do their thing. I mean, before we jump, we jump to I mean, I'm not here. to I'm not here to justify any kind of bad behavior. No, and I'm, I'm not, not and I'm not going to bash. I'm, him but, you know, the, but, the but you know, but let me say this. Up. Let me say this, y'all. Y'all watch enough social media and TikTok to, to see how these fights are, and you know, mm-hmm. among among some of these younger couples. I'm not saying it's Tina and Ike. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nobody say we don't know. We really don't know. So if there's a video, we'll see if the video comes out. I'd love right, to see it. Right, but the thing is, I'd love you know, and if, to see it. You know, if this chick was doing that for attention, yeah, and to raise, you know, and to get, you know, to get put on and to get some go away money, yeah. then. I'm calling. You remember how TLC and Lisa Left Eye Lopez, rest in peace, went up to Clive Davis' office with the baseball bat and the mm-hmm. girls from the, the. We need to go find that girl and beat her ass down. That's all I got. Didn't to say. Didn't Lisa beat Andre Risen's ass a couple of times? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, before wait, before she said his house right before she set his house on fire. I'm just saying we before, we gonna call this the spirit of so, Left Eye. We so gonna I'm get go saying, get Right Eye. I'm just saying. You know, so I just I'm not even gonna call that girl's name, but rest girl, you know who you are, you yeah, she gonna have. That she gonna need the rest in power, cause honey, she don't mess. She don't. She don't mess with the king's. Uh, with with the, uh, yeah, the we'll king's third, no wait with the king's third leg, and that's I, all I got. Okay. All right, here we go. What you watching this week, Tommy B? Just real quick, um, just added to Peacock. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see it. It is worth the watch. Um, Knock at the cabin. Uh, another M. Night Sha- Shyamalan movie uh, stars David Batista, and, and if not, if, if 2023 wasn't apocalyptic enough, <laughs> you know, mm. it's it's a mm. more apocalypse mm. for you. But um, you know, I don't want to give out any spoilers, uh, but just say if you've seen Cabin in the Woods, the old funny, the one with Sigourney Weaver, just think of it as a scaled down, unfunny Cabin in the Woods. Um, but it's uh, it's interesting and it's on uh, Peacock. If you get a chance to watch it. Also, and, and thank you for sending me this, Tanya B. I had a chance to watch it today. Oh, that? On Oxygen True Crime Season 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, watch the real murders of Atlanta, and they cover the assassination of Sheriff-elect Derwin Brown, a case that really shook uh, Atlanta law enforcement to the core. No, uh, no, it, it, no, let me say this. Wait, to this day, it still shakes my family to the core. Yeah, we have and, never been the same. And it touches you personally because these this is yes. your family. These are your cousins. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's my first cousin. You know, shout out to Brandy Brown. Did an, an amazing job uh, retelling the story on camera. But check it out. Uh, it's on Oxygen True Crime Season 2. Uh, talks to Jackie, uh, the legendary Sheriff Jackie Brown. Uh, am I, am I, I'm, I'm screwing I'm screwing her name up. But, you know, I'll, I'll get her name. It'll come to her. Me. Yeah, uh, yeah, her, that, her, the lady, yeah. And, and just <laughs> off, cause I know. That's so horrible, I know. Cuts me out, but she's, she's a legend. Uh, all the legendary law enforcement is in this episode uh, and um, it is definitely um, the case that sealed the name of uh, Sidney Dorsey in infamy forever. Uh, and his so, horrible toupee. Yes, yes. So. And, you know what's interesting? This comes on now, and um, we're approaching uh, the anniversary of one of, his mother, my aunt Bravino, is one of my favorite aunts. She was like the cool hip aunt everybody wants to have. Mm-hmm. And we're approaching actually uh, the anniversary um, of her uh, 15th year that she's since she passed away. It broke her heart and it, just, it, broke, it broke all of our hearts because I don't have brothers. So that was the closest thing that I ever had to a brother. And because his father, my mother's only brother and our grandfather, Thomas Brown, mm. had passed away, he was the head of the family. Yeah, we got to have them on the show uh, in April. If you can, yeah. maybe April yeah. or May, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And, and let me get yeah. it right for all the folks in law enforcement in the city of Atlanta or in government, Jacqueline Barrett. The former Thank sheriff, Jack, Jack, I think she's Jacqueline Barrett, Washington. Now she's, she's Sheriff Barrett. Jackie. Yeah, Sheriff Jackie. So she's Jackie. in this Jackie. as well. Um, mm-hmm. Just a couple of leftovers, uh, things we, we didn't talk about. Uh, Quinta Brunson, and you mentioned this before, uh, this is going to be next week. She's on SNL uh, yeah. April yeah. 1st with musical guests. I don't know why. A little yachty. A little yachty. A little yachty. I don't know. Well, no, no, he needs a check because he's <laughs> caught up in that crypto scam. Yeah, he, he needs the money to pay. No, you no pay I want to say one people. thing. You, yeah. Go ahead. I got one more thing before we go. I just want to say shout out to and Now you talked last week about Swarm. Oh, that, I'm not finished. Uh, that, I got some more, but go ahead. Go ahead and finish. Uh, no, just the fact that, um, you know, you look at rich kids or people that have high profile parents. Oh, they ain't got no talent. But I just want to say shout out to Malia Obama. She's one of the writers on Swarm. 
Yeah, she is. She is definitely. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. somebody else called me out, said, "Hey, you didn't mention, you didn't mention that uh, Monday Well, we did. We did on, now. Rode on swarm. I'm like, okay, wait, damn, who, said that, <laughs> no, wait, who not, said that, Howard? Wait, who said that, Howard? Howard? Know, did you say that, Howard? Rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. But you know, I got to say a couple of things. Amanda Bynes mm-hmm. has been placed on psychiatric Ooh. hold following a mental health episode, and if you have kids or you grew up in the generation of the dancing lobsters on the Amanda show. You know, it's amazing to see a lot of what this young woman has gone. She's like, like Lindsay Lohan has gone. She's through. worse than Lindsay. She's, she's worse. worse. She is it's worse. a shame it's worse. They but, found her walking down the street naked. But I remember an episode. because, you know, Millennial Nick, um, yeah. it was one of his favorite shows, um, the Amanda show, the, the dancing lobsters. She was the judge, yeah. you know, just, a, just an amazing, talented, funny woman who's just been reduced to psychiatric yeah, yeah. Who, hold. I mean, you know, you know, know who knew back who knew? then, who you would have never thought looking at her then that she'd end up like she is now. And clearly, yeah. you know, maybe her, her parents were just going for the bad because she clearly was probably struggling back then. Yeah. Also, Doja Cat uh, has a, a fourth studio album coming out called Hellmouth. Uh, Beyonce and Adidas have agreed to part ways, placing the future of Ivy Park in limbo, y'all. Uh, Netflix mm-hmm. released the trailer for, if y'all are Bridgerton fans, the spinoff Queen Charlotte, she black, on May 4th. Yeah. ABC's Abbott Elementary has been renewed for a third season. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brady is buying a WNBA team, the Las Vegas Aces. He's buying part in it, but it still has to be approved. Uh, the Rolling Loud tour in New York 20, uh, 2023 has been canceled due to logistic errors. And yeah, right. No, they had problem, they had problems last time. That's yeah. what that is. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have you basically uh, mentioned this was coming back in season two of ABC's The Wonder right. Years. Uh, the premiere Yay! date is official now. It's June fourteenth. So. The Wonder yeah. Years premieres uh, season two on June 14th. Uh, I, and again, I got to say a, a big thanks to uh, George Cheedy. Uh, yeah. And journalist George Cheedy. I'll make sure uh, the contact information is on the notes. Uh, follow us on social media. We especially, again, if you if you don't watch us, you can come watch us now on YouTube. And please, all you have to do is search This is the G Podcast on YouTube. Uh, we take live every Sunday, 6 p.m. Yes. Um, you know, I'm going to have to make a song up, Tanya B, to get people to go to YouTube and check us out. But still keep streaming the audio. Still keep getting the podcast every Sunday night. Please do. Yes, but, yes, but yes. Go please. and just subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm going to start singing on the show. That's coming up. That- oh, Lord. <laughs> You better call I know, you want I know you want it. I know you want it. <laughs> also, follow us on Twitter at This Is The G Pod. And uh, any final thoughts before we get up out of here? No, just good. I just want to say, um, you know, no, just this week in the Birdwire, we paid tribute to Bobby Caldwell. I say the original cat in the hat and, you know, blue eyed soul when, you know, when you did, when, you know, and it's just like, it's good music. You don't care whether he's black, blue, green, and grizzly gray. Now, next week on the Birdwire, we are going to um, salute Fuzzy Haskins, one of the original founding members back to the 60s of Parliament Funkadelic. So, Man. although we keep doing this rest in peace shows and these tributes, I just love pulling out, you know, I love pulling out that music. And just real quick, and, and you know, we'll talk about this next week. Your movie is coming out, uh, Spinning Gold, uh, Casablanca on the yes! 31st. Yes, yes. Uh, I tell I'm tell, y'all better get with ready. Wiz Khalifa as George Clinton. George Clinton, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be know, crazy. Wait, let, it, let it see is Gladys Knight. Yeah. Jason Derulo is... Mm, Scamming Ron Isley. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that after we get off the, uh, off the Let's show's do over. Let's do that um, when the show is over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've got some heavyweights in there. Jay Pharoah and I mean, Johnny Gill. I, I'm yeah. telling you, you better get ready. And I heard he was get trying ready. to get uh, actually Spike Lee and, and it fell through. There was some issues trying to get Spike yeah. Lee to direct that. But yeah. anyway, y'all, um, again, condolences and our prayers go out uh, to the folks in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, uh, all through yeah. Alabama and definitely huh. Uh, the folks in LaGrange, yeah. uh, Troop County, Georgia, man, there were people trapped in uh, debris, people, you know, still being found in debris. But um, yeah. if you're looking for a way to give uh, charity uh, to to the uh, victims of, of these uh, just tragic tornadoes, um, Charity Navigator, I'd recommend go there because it will give you the best charities to give to uh, because you just can't give your money to everybody or your or donate your items to just anybody. Uh, oh, yeah. Guide Star is another one. Uh, the state of Mississippi website. Just make sure you, uh, Brett Favre's picture is not on it. 
and uh, the United Way of Central Mississippi, uh, the United Way of Central Mississippi, uh, America Red American Red Cross, and there's awesome. a Go- GoFundMe. If you go to GoFundMe, they've got a specific location where you can actually give to, give to the victims of the tornado. So, Directly, you know, our prayers go out to those people, to the to yes. that, those, I'm not, you know, to our fam, you know, the the G's. A lot of folks in those areas listen to the podcast as well. So mm-hmm. we just want to say, I, I hope this thing. Uh, the recovery is speedy because in a lot of cases it hasn't been. So I hope that they. No, that. no, and what hasn't been these people? I mean, that place was flat. It looked like yeah. you know, the tornado in the Wizard of Oz. I mean, these people had nothing. Like, it was crazy. Nothing. Yeah. Hey y'all! But uh, again, thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you again. Follow us. Uh, check us out live and check out the podcast. And with that, episode one sixty nine is show enough in the can, and we are out of here. Thank you so much, Tanya B, at your remote location. Appreciate I'm back, you as always. You know? But you know what? We got to do this. We did not. And I almost walked away okay. without doing Benediction. it. But here we Don't go. We need it. You know, we I, need I'm it. I'm to you today. <laughs> <laughs> inspirational moment with Vi. We may suffer for many reasons. Some suffering is the direct result of our own sin. Some happens because of our foolishness and some are the result of living in a fallen world. Christ never sinned. Yet he suffered so that we could be set free. When we follow Christ's example and live for others, we too may suffer. Our goal should be to face suffering as he did, with patience, calmness, and confidence that God is in control of the future. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example. And you must follow in his steps. All I'm saying, people, no matter what you're going through, no matter how bad it is, God is always in control. What that means is, it's going to be all right. God will get you through. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, Vi, thank you so much, man. You know, Vi is down there in near uh, Columbus, so uh, hopefully, you know, we got, I got to reach out to my brother, make sure he's cool, because he, he's uh, okay, maybe yeah. in that same area. So thank you so much, y'all. And with that, episode 169 is in the can, and we are out of here. Peace and power to the people. It's, Have a great week. It's a wrap. You've been listening to The G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. The G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.